So here we have a giant sequoia takedown. Um, the tree was two thirds dead. Underneath was power lines, driveway, retaining wall, rhododendrons, sprinklers, um, you name it. The limbing part did involve uh, rigging and also cutting and holding and catching and throwing but we're going to skip that part in the video and go straight to the logs because the the limbing part is, is very uninteresting to watch and it's it's just too repetitive so i'll do my best with the edit of the logs um that does repeat itself a lot too so i'll i'll be uh, selective with what i show hopefully it's watchable okay so in, enjoy the video and i'm out for now Go forward a little bit. Just wait and I'll rake a bit down. Just wait, just wait there.
seven o'clock. Just finished cleaning up sawdust and chips. All the wood's gone. Stumps down, you can't. I can see it a bit now. Site is tidy as I can get it in the dark. I've been on my own today, that's why everything just takes so long. It's so annoying. It's like when I was shoveling this chip on. I have a full load on there, you can't see it. But it was as if somebody was putting more there. I just kept on covering more and more and more. All embedded in these trees. He's going to grind the stump anyway. But oh, the light's gone off. But um, yeah, the wall's okay. Whew, rhododendrons are all right. Wires are up. Everything is okay. I'll do a summary video tomorrow. I've got to get home, get some food. Cause I'm starving. Today's the day after. I've just been out looking at some work. So why didn't you use a crane is probably a question in the forefront of some people's minds. There was a few reasons and uh, you know it's a big heavy piece of wood there at the end so a big crane would be needed. We've got power lines there too. Um, and the only access for a big crane would have been the road, which would have meant blocking the road, which would have meant paying for a permit to do that. Also paying for the crane time, paying for a truck to put the wood on in big sections. And it, it, the job all of a sudden becomes a lot more expensive. It would have been yeah, a fraction of the time and effort involved. But logistically, it still becomes far more expensive. And um, one of the, the other issues as well, something else to consider is that um, I was paid to deliver the wood as, you know, for firewood, in, well, in manageable pieces to the owner's son who lived about 50 minutes drive away and so where he lives as well although he has a big area to dump the wood it's a very tight turning into his place no big truck is going in there so um, you know I had to a small truck was was the only way you're gonna get in and Again, I wasn't being paid to deliver big pieces. They have to be manageable pieces. It's not as if um, it was an option to me to do what I wanted with a wood. That was a condition of the job. Um, he didn't give a damn about milling logs or anything like that. They wanted firewood. Uh, nobody cares about a sequoia in... Um, coastal BC I can tell you so uh, if that would have been your conditions so we're only we'll only do it if we can use a crane and etc and then you wouldn't have got the job so um, so we just did it conventionally just me and Elliot that's two of us and now I was messing about there for the best part of a week well all week Elliot was there most of the week just not the last day and um, obviously there was wood chip loads to run and there was um, there was the wood which had to be cut small to bring down into the small space that we had and then load on to my truck and then that had to be delivered I think at six or seven loads I think it was to get everything two truckloads of sawdust um, and it, you know it, it got done in the time that I expected it was more or less um, it did run I did, did have a late night uh, yesterday um, the biggest kind of oversight or blind spot that I had 
you know, retrospectively was the time it took for me to go and dump the wood. Um, I don't know what I was thinking there um, because it was, you know, I was gone for almost two hours each time with a load of wood. So on the last few days, and, and it really came into play on the last day when I was on my own, I, you know, I did two loads of wood and I was gone for four hours. That's four hours of the day gone. That's a massive chunk of day. And um, so, yeah, I, I, that, that was the, the, the mistake, really. But other than that, you know, the more critical parts of the job, the power lines, you know, bringing that dead wood down safely over the power lines without anything breaking and shattering and falling on the wires. And then, um, you know, bringing the big wood down safely, small enough, and not doing any damage to the wall or the driveway or anything else. It was slow, but, you know, methodical, but it, it, it worked out. And it's, it's you know, it's, it doesn't matter to me. It's all in a day's work. Um, you know, the, using the big saw for so long in the tree, that the 3120, with that can, the cannon bar is heavy. It's a heavy bar. Um, but, you know, it, it looks hard, but it's... And I'm not a big fella, but it, which goes to show it's, it's it's all technique, really. This technique and practice and, you know, and I don't carry it if I don't have to. I'm, I take every opportunity to rest it on the wood, not have it hanging on myself. So, um, you know, when, when, and when you... When you when you're an owner operator, you you just do have to grind it out sometimes. You know, you, you have to put in some long nights, and um, and it's it's not a big deal. It's not every job is like that, but when it happens, it it's um you gotta get your hands dirty. So anyway, I've spoken for long enough. Um, hope you enjoyed that more than I did. All right. Cheers.